Hello everyone, this is Steve Disher from ISP Supplies, and today I want to talk to you about a product that we sell called the Teltonica RMS, or Remote Management System. This is an online or cloud-based product that is compatible with the Teltonica modems that we sell at ISP Supplies. And if you're not familiar with Teltonica, well, you should be. They have a great product that allows you to get remote connectivity to Internet of Things, machine-to-machine -machine networks, or to provide backup connectivity for mission-critical applications. They are cellular-based, and they work with all the top carriers, including Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, and so on. So the next question is, what is RMS? Well, it's a remote management system that gives you cloud-based control and monitoring of all of your Teltonica modems that live out on the internet. And so with this cloud control, you can make configuration changes to the device, you can upgrade firmware, or you can monitor the health of your connection to each of your Teltonica modems. RMS is available at ISP Supplies. It is a licensed service where you create the user account for free, and then you license the number of items that you want to be able to monitor in your RMS account. If you look at uh, ISP Supplies website and search for RMS, you'll find the RMS license fee uh, item, which contains uh, not only the item, but also the data sheet, as well as some information about RMS. RMS also has apps available for Android or iOS that give you complete control and monitoring over your devices. There's also a data sheet there that explains more about the RMS system and what its statistical and maintenance capabilities are. So let's dive in now a little bit about RMS so you can see how it works, how you set up a device. This is not a in-depth, uh, complicated training session on RMS, but rather it's simply a introduction to show you some of the capabilities. So I'm going to log into my RMS account, which is rms.teltonica.lt. When you first log in, it's going to take you to a overview of all of your devices. And since we don't have any devices configured yet, obviously there's no devices there. So what we want to do is to add a device. A device needs to be added by adding in the name of the device, how you want it to appear in the RMS system, the serial number, as well as the MAC address. Those pieces of information would be available on the unit itself, or in my case, I'm simply going to log into the device and do a copy and paste. And so I go to 192.168.1.1, which is my uh, RUT240 modem. And at this point, it's going to give me a statistics page, which contains some important information about our connectivity. From this page, we will move over to the system administration page. And then we'll click the link that says RMS. On the RMS page, you will see we, are, we have our RMS settings as disabled right now, but the information we're looking for here is the serial number and the MAC address. So I'll copy those to my clipboard and then paste them in to the RMS add device. And for the name, I'm going to put Verizon test unit. And I'll click add. Now, notice that I did not select a company name, and so it's going to tell me anytime I make an error. So the purpose of the company name is to allow you to organize your devices based upon different companies that you may be providing the service for. I've already added my company over here on the left under the user section. And so now I'll click add, and we can close this window. So at this point in time, we are halfway there. We've added our device to our RMS system. We have licenses available to assign to the device. You see, I have 10 licenses, uh, nine are still available. And the last step is to go into our RUT240 and tell it to contact the RMS system. To do that, back on the RMS tab, we'll set the connection type to enabled and hit save. 
and now this device will go to the RMS cloud server and try and check in. If the configuration is available at the cloud server as well as an available license, then it will show what this one does now and it will say connected. Back to the RMS screen, we'll go to the management overview. And you notice the status of our device right now has a black dot, which means that it is not yet activated. So at this point, we've been waiting for about three or four minutes. And you notice that our device has finally checked in and it has synced up with the RMS system. We can tell that because the status circle has turned green, meaning that we have at least one unit online. And also we have a green dot in the list under status, and we have some additional actions down here that we can perform. Now that this device has synced up, I want to look at what each of these icons does for us. The first one is this, the little circle with the eye. That is the device detail information. If I click on that, it's going to show me all the device details it knows about, such as uptime, the serial number, the firmware version, and so on. Going back to the management overview, this one is really handy. This is the web UI. And what you can do with this is to launch a session, a remote session with this particular device and be able to perform any configuration change, firmware update, get status, anything that can be done locally on the device through the web UI, you can also do remotely. And the great part about it, there's no routing required, no VPN setup. It's really seamless. The way it does it is by generating a link through the cloud system. And that link can be good for days or even minutes. The default time is 30 minutes. This will give you 30 minute access to the device. And so we'll just select the default and we'll click on the link and it will open a new tab for us here at the top of the page. Once, once the tab loads up, we will have the login screen where we can log into the device with the administrator username and password. And it doesn't matter if I'm in the same room or a thousand miles away, I'll get access to the router as if it were here in the room with me. Now you might notice that I have another tab open here at the top of my browser. And if I click on that, you'll notice this is my local login to the device. So if I was connected to the device on the local area network, this is what I would see for the status page. Or if I was a thousand miles away accessing it remotely, I see exactly the same status page. So everything that you get in a local configuration session on the device, you get through the RMS remote session. The great part about it is there's no VPN tunnels to set up, no port forwarding. Uh, so regardless of where the device is located, whether or not it has a public IP, it doesn't matter. It's all handled for you in the background. Now there's numerous things we can do from this point in time. We can make any configuration setting that we want to make. We can go in and look at the event log, or we could do things like a firmware upgrade. And all this can be done remotely through the RMS system. Another useful and interesting thing that you can do from the RMS system is firmware upgrades. And you can do it for one device or thousands of devices. So my screen's not particularly interesting here because I only have one device, but if I had numerous devices, I could very easily upgrade the firmware on all of them. So to do that, I simply select the device, go up here to the top to the action tab, and I click update firmware. It's going to ask me which version of the firmware I want to install. And so I can pick that and hit select, and then it's going to perform an upgrade on that device. So whether I have one or a thousand, it's all done in one fell swoop. So that's the basics of RMS, how to add a device, how to perform some functions like a software upgrade, how to access the device remotely, either through the web UI or through the CLI, which is also available. Uh, in addition, uh, some of the things you can do with the RMS or monitor your devices and even have it send you alerts if the device goes down or loses connectivity. In order to set up your own RMS account, all you'll need to do is to go to rms.teltonica.lt and right here you can register a new account. Once you've registered your account, if you'd like to add devices to the account, you just need licenses for those devices. 
and those can be obtained from ispsupplies.com. Search for RMS, and you're going to see the RMS item. Simply add the number of license months that you want to cover, add them to your cart, and check out. Remember that the license covers one device for one month. And so if you want to monitor one device for one year, then you'll need to purchase 12 licenses. So that's it for today. I hope this introduction to the Teltonica RMS system is useful to you and that you enjoy using this in your own practice.